Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. This week we're hitting the road to uh, McLean Children's Hospital and talking with Dr. Krista Birkenmeyer, a radiologist. So, Dr. Birkenmeyer, what, for people that may not know, I mean, people have heard of x-rays and stuff like that, what exactly is the science of radiology? Right, so radiology is imaging. It's medical imaging to try to help the doctors figure out what's wrong and how we can fix it, and it is vast. Um, a radiologist is a physician, a medical doctor, who then does training in radiology. It's a, at least five years of training. Um, some people go many more, five to seven years of training after medical school. And so we do the interpreting and we do image-based procedures. Within radiology then you have different modalities or ways that we can take images. So ultrasound, a lot of people are familiar with ultrasound from like say ultrasounding a baby to see is it a boy or a girl. Well that may be what, we're <laughs> what the mom and dad are looking for, but what we're looking for is anatomic abnormalities that might impact birth. Do they have a heart defect? Um, you know, is there something wrong with the spine? Is, you know, things that we would need for planning where they're going to be born and what treatment might be needed. That's the one people are most com uh, commonly familiar with, but in kids we use ultrasound for so many things, mostly because they're skinny and we can see really good with ultrasound and it has no radiation, unlike some of the other forms of imaging. Fluoroscopy is another modality um, where it uses x-rays in sort of a video, and so if we were to do uh, say active procedure, um, that way they don't have to go to surgery. We can do procedures like joint injections, um, we can do feeding tube placements either through the nose or through uh, an area in the abdomen, and we use these x-rays then to guide us to get things in the right spot. Um, we also use fluoroscopy for diagnosis, and so we can have the kids, say, drink barium. Barium is kind of a chalky substance that we can see on our x-ray machine, so we can watch it go down and see how they swallow, look at the esophagus and the stomach, the intestines, or go from below, depending on what the clinical question is that we can answer. X-ray is just like a single x-ray um, instead of doing a, a movie like fluoroscopy, and I think most people are familiar with that, x-rays of the chest and the abdomen and the bones. Um, and then we can go to MRI. Now MRI is a lot more technologically advanced. It uses magnets to make pictures, so it is not radiation. Um, people are always concerned about radiation for good reason. It can add up um, to potentially cause cancer, so we try to avoid that by doing things like MRI. Now MRIs take a lot longer, um, but they provide a lot of good information, and we can do so many things. We can look at the brain, we can look at all the different body parts, um, we can even, for our kids with inflammatory bowel disease, we can look at motion. So you can take what we call cine clips, where it watches the bowel peristalse um, to see that it functions normally, which is really cool to see. CT scan does have radiation, does great imaging, does amazing things, and our CT scanner is actually very cool because it kind of senses the size of the kid and adjusts the radiation dose to be as low as possible to get good images. Um, and so uh, we use that for a lot of the basic things. We use it for tumors, um, looking at the lungs for lung nodules. Uh, we can use it for appendicitis if we can't see it uh, with the ultrasound. Like I said, it does have a little radiation. One CT scan I don't worry about, but you don't want to have to get multiple CT scans. So we try to divert to MR and ultrasound for those things. And then there's also nuclear medicine. I know it goes on and on and on. So nuclear medicine is uh, where a specially trained technologist will inject, uh, usually into the bloodstream, depending on what the test is, um, a certain amount of radiation attached to something, depending on what test you need. And then that something goes throughout your body and we look at it under a camera that actually senses the radiation that comes out of the person. And so we can get pictures of how the kidney functions, how the liver takes up that um, radio tracer is what it's called, and excretes it. You can look at the heart for heart attacks, that's usually in older people. Um, we can look at the gallbladder. Uh, and so that actually shows physiology, it shows how the body works, which is very cool. How much does radiology help for maybe making it where you don't have as much invasive surgeries mm -hmm. or helping to find stuff that before you would have to cut open and look to figure out what's right. wrong with them? Uh, it's very good at figuring out what to do before you cut into it. So much so that, you know, the surgeons and the doctors really, like, they, ha they really want to have that scan. The only time they wouldn't do that is if it was, uh, let's say it's a traumatic patient just had a car accident, and they can tell just by feeling their belly they're going to have to go to surgery. If they're stable, like clinically stable, they'll still get the CT scan to see 
um, if, if there's anything else, but if they're not stable, they would go straight to the OR. And then honestly, most of them still get a CT scan afterwards to make sure there's not anything hiding in places that they couldn't see in the operating room. You really see a, just a wide variety of stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that fun for you or a little difficult knowing that you've, you've got to keep kind of abreast of all these different types of right. things that come, come in your office? Well, it's definitely challenging, but interesting. And I'm always learning and I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't want my job to be uh, knowing everything and I, I don't know how you could in medicine but yeah we especially in children um, in pediatric radiology are covering everything and so I might be looking at an EMRI for an ACL tear one minute and the next minute a fracture and the next minute a tumor and the next minute a uh, neonatal ICU baby's head ultrasound and I love that um, and then we do some specialized things I do fetal imaging fetal MRI um, and I'm, I'm the trained person to do that here and I just love it. Um, so we actually bring the moms in that are pregnant and we do scans and I sit at the scanner with the technologist so that we can kind of problem solve exactly what we need to answer to get the images. It's hard to see babies with problems but it helps so much to know that I can give them the answers that will help them know the prognosis, help them know what they need uh, for birth. Um, and it just very neat images. On an MRI, since you're not using radiation how, and it's magnetic, mm -hmm. how, how is the magnetic making it where y'all can see an image inside of there? <laughs> Magic. <laughs> um, you know, I had to know this for my physics, but <laughs> <laughs> you create gradients and magnetic fields oh, okay. and it goes to a computer that then Let's recapitulates that data into an image and it's, it's more complex than yes. I can get into for sure. <laughs> if it's more complex for you then it's definitely yeah. for me. So the you know I know the CT scans have got more where they're more wide open now with mm. you know, but MRIs are still kind of a tight you'll have people I know kids is that worry them getting in those tubes and being there for a while? Um, we, you know our MR scanner is the same size as the adult ones. Mm. They are they feel tighter than a CT. It is a little smaller than a CT. The kids usually do okay, but you know, we also have a trick. We have video goggles. Mm -hmm. And so the kids can put the goggles on and watch a movie. And they watch that for their MR scan. So I think that helps too. Also with kids being smaller, they don't tend to notice um, the enclosed space as much. The, the contrast that you have to do, <laughs> why is that so, I mean, is it just because the, the material makes it easier to see for those scans? Right, so the contrast goes in the vein and then it goes through the heart into all the organs. And so, for example, in a trauma, I probably wouldn't be able to see a cut in the liver unless I have that contrast because that part won't light up with the contrast. It's not vascularized. So you have to have it really for trauma. You have to have it if you're looking at the blood vessels because it's in the blood vessels. Um, you have to, you really ought to have it for anything that might be cancer, a tumor, or an infection because it'll make those things show up and you might very well miss them if you don't have contrast. And then especially little kids, they don't have much fat in their abdomen. And so in adults who have fat in their abdomen, they'll kind of like separate the bowel and the organs and we can see a little better without contrast. Kids don't have that, it all looks gray. So we really need the contrast to, to show the different organs. What kind of punch put your direction into radiology? What, what made you decide to mm -hmm. go that path? Yeah, it's interesting because before medical school, um, I had a friend I was working with and she said she was going into radiology and I thought, why, what is that? What, you know, what would be interesting about that? But then my first year after medical school, um, we were married and both going to school, living on school loans, so I thought I need to have a job that is medical and pays. And it just so happened that Cincinnati Children's Hospital um, had a paid internship where I could do part-time research and part-time observing, so learning, and I got paid to learn. Um, and so I did that and that's when my eyes were opened and I thought, wow, this is amazing. I don't have to do surgery to see the anatomy and to figure out problems and help fix people. Um, I can see all this on imaging and it's like a puzzle to put together and I just loved it. And as I went through my medical training, you know, even though I loved all the things I did, um, I always came back to the imaging and I love the problem solving. You have seen a lot of development and new stuff. <clears throat> what do you think moving forward will be some of the improvements or changes that could come to the, the science of radiology and to help patients? Right. I think um, for MRI it would be great, and, and it is, and people are working on it, to come up with sequences that are faster. It's still kind of a long exam, usually 20 to 40 minutes depending on what you're looking at. And so as we come up with faster, stronger gradients that we can do imaging quicker, then we have less need for sedation and we can use that technology that um, you know, does not have the, the radiation then. I think we're doing a lot right now with 3D reformatting um, and kind of actively acquiring 
uh, images in motion, especially with the heart. And we do that with MRI and CT and with the bowel with MRI. Um, and I think that really helps us with diagnosis and also the clinicians um, to see what's going on. And ultrasound is improving all the time. The image quality is just vastly improved even in the last 10 years. And I think in pediatrics, you know, we're moving more towards more ultrasound for more things. So even some procedures that we would have done here in fluoroscopy are starting to be moved toward ultrasound. Even with um, intravenous injection of itty bitty micro bubbles and looking at liver tumors and how, how those bubbles move through the tumors to help to, um, to diagnose them. So that's one of the newer things um, that's happening. And, and so it's always moving, always progressing. Kind of that puzzle keeps growing for mm -hmm. you, I'm guessing. It does, uh, well, it does. I Dr. Love Berkemeyer, it. thank you for taking the time to, to talk with us. All right, great. Thank you so much. Right. I appreciate it.